Katrina's Creations. This is episode 83. If you're a new viewer, thank you for stopping by. And please click the subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell next to it, you will be notified anytime I post a video, which is normally on Saturday mornings. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming by. And we're going to announce our yarn giveaway winner, but not yet. But it will be announced today. So I have a finished object, which you can see right over here. Um, I've got my blocking boards out. So I'm going to show you the finished object. It is the Ate Chic. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. And uh, we actually have one of our uh, viewers that is also doing this. So Ray L. Let me know how it turns out. Send me a picture. We'll stick it up on the on the uh, podcast if you like. So let me turn this camera around. Hope you don't get seasick. I'm going to move the camera so you guys can see what it looks like. I am using the blocking boards that I talked about last week. And I'll just pan all the way across. This is roughly a 60-inch sort of like a, a collar. It wraps around like a small scarf. Now, I have the blocking wires along here, and then instead of pinning each one of these points individually, I'm going to move this up close so you can see what I did, I threaded the blocking wire through it, and then I have pins just holding the whole wire down in place. So it's stretching it between here and here. So there it is. It's literally still wet. I just pinned it before the video. So it will probably take a day or two to dry. So that is the Ate Chic. So that's my finished um, project for this week. Then let's uh, talk about what I've got works in progress. I've been knitting a lot this week. I've gotten a lot done. So. Let me show you my first thing, which is my Barton cardigan. Um, I am right at the next row is where I will start dividing for the front and the back and the sleeves. So here is, let me unwind some yarn so you can see it. Here is the Barton cardigan, and it's all twisted here. This is the front where it gets steeped, and you can see last week... I finished right here. So I've done about two and a half to three inches. Probably about two and a half inches. So my next row is where I will divide. And this is, it is cabled all the way around. So when it divides, as it narrows, you do decreases as it approaches the, the neckline or the yoke of the pattern. Um, but it still stays in the cables. They just get narrower because um, these are fairly wide at this point. These these cables uh, right here, they're six stitches across each cable. So it's a total of 12 stitches with a garter in between. So this is 13 stitches, and these begin narrowing down as it approaches the neckline. And this will be a cardigan, so it will be steeped right here when I finish. And don't worry, I will film it. We can all hold our breath together as I cut it and Hope it won't unravel. I know it won't. I've done it before, but but it's still a little a little nervy to when you cut this thing and hope it doesn't go. Pfft, but it doesn't. Trust me. Now here's the funny thing. I'm over halfway done my sweater. I got to show you the amount of yarn I've got left. Look at this. I could knit for the entire neighborhood, or I could knit a small tent. Um, I bought this. I have several cones of wool like this, not the same color, I have some in other colors, that I bought at Peter Patches. It's a yarn warehouse um, up in Rhode Island, in like a suburb of Providence, Rhode Island. In, it's called Cranston. Anyway, they're mill ends, so you buy them, you have to buy two pound uh, skeins when you get them, and they roll. he rolls them for you. So this is two pounds of, this is a wool blend, so, um, yeah, you can see I've got tons of this yarn left. It doesn't even look like I've made a dent into it, and I'm pretty much halfway through the sweater. So 
I have a feeling I'm going to have lots of this left over. So anyway, but I've got several cones of yarn like this in different colors. I think I've got a red and a blue and a green. Yeah, I think a red and a, and a gold. The gold I've already knitted into a sweater, which I've shown on the podcast before. Um, but yeah, this is, and this is what you would call a rustic yarn. It's not real soft. It's not something you're going to want right up against your body. Although when this is washed, I have tested it, um, on a little swatch like this. And when it was, when it was blocked and washed, um, it's a lot softer. So we'll see. We'll see. But I, I don't think I would want to wear this right against my skin. But anyway, I, the reason I bought this much yarn, two pounds of yarn at a time, is because it was cheap. Um, you know, me, cheap is plastered on my forehead. Um, I forget what I paid for it. It was like $8. I think it was around $8 a pound, and it's wool. So, you know, it's a good deal. I don't know what kind of deals he's running up there now, um, but when I went there, yeah, I got that, and a 10% discount at the time. So... That is my Barton cardigan. Then I've been working on my cotton sweater. This will get worn next to my skin. It's a cotton bamboo blend. And let me find my marker where I was at last week. Where's my little, oh, here it is. It's my little hamburger. There's my little hamburger. This is polymer clay that I made. So I've knitted about two inches. And I'm just kind of randomly changing, changing balls of yarn. So it's kind of striping a little bit. The one gray that I'm using is variegated. You can see it here. This is the Lana Grossa. So if parts of it are dark, parts of it are light. So that's why the striping, like right in here, it really doesn't look like I've striped a whole lot, but I really have. Um, it just happened to be the same color as the yarn I'm doing with it. And this is this color gray which is kind of a, a light charcoal, maybe a slate color gray. And the ball of yarn that this is coming from is called Baby Show, which I got from my local yarn store. They used to carry it on eBay. I don't, I haven't seen it any more since. So, um, but this is extremely soft and it's going to be just a summer, um, like a drop sleeve type of sweater. So here it is so far. I've got a ways to go before I start separating for the sleeves, but that's that project. Then I just needed a, a break for some, from some bigger projects and decided let's play with the cozy memory blanket. So I put four squares on my cozy memory blanket. And these are all, with the exception of this one, these are all ones that I've dyed myself when my granddaughter and I were playing with yarn a few episodes ago. So there's this one, which is just a tonal blue. She did a gradient yarn, um, but it was a different, it was a, I think it was a merino. This is just a Highland wool and hers dyed up almost an aqua color. And she did, we did it as a gradient. Uh, if you want to see that, I'll put a little card up there and you can click on the little eye and it'll take you to where we did this. So we did this dyeing here, this is in a blue, kind of a turquoisey blue. And then we did this one, which is all different. Let's see if I get that closer so you can see it. All different colors. This was left over from my Keeping You in Stitches shawl, which you're actually going to see in a few minutes when I talk about another topic. And so this is a Knit Picks palette yarn. And then this was the other um, yarn that my granddaughter and I dyed. And it's just a uh, kind of a spring green. It reminds me of Irish spring soap. But anyway, and it's got like dark speckles of green in it. So I really like this one. So I did those four. This is what my blanket, in case you haven't seen it. Um, it is 13 squares across and eight squares tall at this point. So here it is. There's no way I'm going to get it all in the camera at once because it's getting too big. 
and I love working on this because you can finish a square in about 40 minutes, so it's a quick, it's just something if you want something nice to do that's fast and it's small, it's a fun project. The only not so much fun about this is all of the ends that you've got to weave in. I'll turn this around. You can see I have not woven from the last row. I had been doing a row and then weaving it in, but look at all the ends I'm going to have to weave in. They go all the way across. So, rainy day project, weave all the ends in. Then we come to my crochet project. I did not forget the crocheters in our group. Um, I'm working on the virus shawl, and it is contagious. As I said last week, I finished um, the next ball of yarn. So here is how far it is. I have one more skein of this color to go. And then I go into a smaller skein that's these colors with a dark, darker, um, where the gray is in here, like right in here. It goes into a darker grayish blue. It's really pretty, but it's the same, it's like the same type of yarn and everything. And this is 100% cotton. And there is my virus shawl. I could actually probably wear it now. I'd be very close, but I want it bigger. I don't want it to end. I'm having fun with this. So now that I've caught on, I can do this pattern without looking, and it's a nice, it's a nice car knitting project. And I really, I think I will make this again. In fact, one of the yarns I'm going to talk about today, I think I'm going to do it with this. This was a knit crate yarn. I have two skeins of this. This was a couple months ago, so I think I'm going to use that. So that is the virus shawl. Like I said, I absolutely love this. I'm having all kinds of fun with it. This is a free pattern on Ravelry. We like free. So that is my works in progress. Um, I thought I would give you an update on the hair. A few episodes ago during our yarn giveaway, I asked you what, I, what you thought I should do with my hair. Um, at one point it was neck and neck, pretty much even all the way across the board, whether it should be short, medium, or long. Um, the longs actually the last two weeks have pulled way ahead, so um, I was going to keep it long, I think, anyway. The more I thought about it, um, I never would have probably gone like shoulder length because I like to wear a lot of neck shawls like this. And if I have my hair short, it's above there, so it's not in the way. And if I have it long, it hangs over it. But when I had my hair about shoulder length as it was growing, I had problems because it couldn't decide if it wanted to stay in or out of the shawl. And so, yeah. I did have my husband cut off. Not that you could tell, but I had him cut off about two or three inches off the bottom just to cut the, the straggliness, and I had some split ends and stuff. I do like short hair on me. I just don't know if I'm ready for the amount of work it takes to keep it that way because my hair gets really curly. It's wavy now. It gets really curly when it gets cut shorter and unfortunately it never curls the right direction, which means it takes me a good 20 minutes working with it with a curling iron or a straightener um, in the mornings. And I don't know if I want to do that because right now I don't do anything other than brush it and pull it up. So um, maybe down the road a little bit, I might bite the bullet and cut it, but I don't think I'm quite ready for it yet. So um, that's how the hair debate has turned out, is I did take off, have my husband take off about two or three inches, and he did a good job, which was really good, because the last time I had him trim my hair, he was watching an exciting movie on TV, and he got a little distracted, and so my hair was like, all different lengths and he kept trying to even it out and I went from hair that went almost halfway down my back to above my shoulders by the time he got it straightened out so he was not allowed to watch TV while he trimmed the back of my hair no distractions no. so uh, yeah I don't mind if I eventually go short hair but I wanted to be my choice not because my husband oopsed so anyway that's what happened with great hair debate now I have a question for you all because we do have a lot of crocheters, we kind of about 50-50 split between crocheters and knitters in the group. Now, I'm primary, 
primarily a knitter. When I first started knitting, I used almost all acrylic because I didn't understand why I'd want to spend that much on a higher quality yarn. And let's face it, yarn that is not acrylic can be pricey. Um, you can get deals on it, but it is going to be more expensive than acrylic. So a lot of my first projects while I was learning to knit are acrylic. Um, and a lot of them, of course, are worsted weight because the majority, most of your acrylics come in either a sport weight, which is like your baby weight yarns, um, up to a worsted to a bulky weight. And I'm not a bulky yarn knitter for the most part. Anyway, um, but what I've noticed, because I've started watching some crochet podcasts, because I thought now that I'm getting into crochet a little bit, as well as the knitting, I wanted to learn a little bit more by watching other people that did it. What I'm noticing predominantly is a good majority of crocheters use worsted weight yarn, and they use acrylic yarns all the time. So my question to you all that crochet is why? Why do you just use acrylic? Is it my own guess is because um, knitting uses a third less yarn than crochet. Crochet does use a lot more yarn. And if yarn's pricey, you're going to go through it faster. Um, and the other thought was um, just, like I said, the price point. So those are my guesses. But if you have a reason, I'm just kind of curious. Um, so that being said, I thought I would talk about different fibers and their properties, what they look like and what they look like knitted up. For me, in my case, it's going to be showing you what they look knitted up because I haven't done that many crochet projects. Um, so let's get started. The first one is going to be acrylic. And acrylic was invented by DuPont in 1941. I'm reading off of my notes. Um, it can go by several different names. It can be called acrylic, it can be called nylon, polymer, rayon, orion, which is the name DuPont uses, olefin, or polyester. Um, now, when you are knitting socks, you want some nylon. They, it's usually nylon. It's basically the same thing as acrylic. It's just another name for it. But most of your sock yarns will have maybe 80% of a wool and 20% of a nylon because the nylon gives it the stretch and it also gives it the strength that keeps the socks from wearing through. So I thought I would show you one of my projects that I made. This is a sweater. This is in acrylic. And it has like a lace edge that I did crochet. So I do I did do a little bit of crochet beforehand. So there is, now I take it back, that's knitted. It is knitted at the base. But this is a sweater that I, it has just plain sleeves. I just have the stockinette on the sleeves. And this is called Little Shells. Now, this is acrylic. I made this probably, I would say, six or seven years ago. It has held up pretty well. Um, it is washable. It's been washed a ton of times. It hasn't pilled horribly. I mean, it, there's a little bit of pilling on it. And I have used a, a depiller, you know, as I see the need. But it's it actually has held up pretty well. Because a lot of times um, acrylics can pill a lot faster than some of your other yarns. Um, pilling is the little balls that get on the top of it that you have to kind of shave off. Um, they especially show up like around your underarms, anywhere where there's um, fabric rubbing against fabric. It can cause pilling. So it has held up well. Now let me tell you the pros and cons with acrylics. The pros are it's widely available, it's cheap, it's durable, washable, and I didn't know this, it's, it's non-allergenic. In other words, you're not going to have an allergic reaction like you would to some people have reactions to wools or natural fibers. You won't to acrylics. Um, the cons of it are, it can be rough, um, it is flammable, it can melt, it's non-absorbent. You're not going to make a dishcloth out of it because it's not going to absorb, um, you know, or a dish towel or anything like that. It's not going to absorb anything. Uh, so it doesn't breathe like wool does up against your skin. 
Um, it is created with chemicals in a chemical process, and it's usually made from petroleum products. So it is not eco-friendly. If you're if you are into environmental stuff or eco-friendly things, it is not. Um, now I thought I would share some prices, general prices for acrylics. You can get acrylics at most any big box store like Walmart, um, anything like that. You can get them there, Kmart, Walmart. Um, I am an affiliate for Craftsy and Knit Picks and Lion Brand Yarns. All the links are down below. So I thought I would tell you what kind of prices they are offering, because sometimes they offer specials that get you a little cheaper than the big box stores, or if you don't live near a big box store. Uh, Craftsy has Karen Simply Soft, which I have used. I have made a sweater, two sweaters, out of uh, Karen Simply Soft. I do notice I made a baby blanket. One of my grandsons has a baby blanket that was made out of Karen Simply Soft. It is extremely soft. For an acrylic, it is very soft. But one warning that I ran into with it is it doesn't hold up under a lot of washings. Um, my sweaters were fine because I didn't wash them. One's a shawl, one's a sweater. I didn't wash them a whole lot um, because they weren't like right up against my skin. They were like a cardigan. Um, but my grandson's baby blanket got washed a lot, you know, because he drug it all over the place. And it did fall apart. Uh, fairly fast, I had to knit him another one uh, because, you know, it, it was overloved in a very quick manner. But anyway, Craftsy offers Karen Simply Soft for $2.57. This is U.S. dollars, okay? Um, they also offer Burnett Satin, which is an acrylic, and Vanna's Choice. Uh, the Burnett Satin is $2.27, and Vanna's Choice is $2.63. So that's just to give you some ideas. That's through Craftsy. Um, Lion Brand also has some acrylic available. Um, Knit Picks has uh, Bravo Worsted for $1.99 for a 100 gram ball, and that is 218 yards. So, and, and of course, like I said, your big box stores like Hobby Lobby, Walmart, any of those also will carry acrylics, and you can get them on sale, and you can make something for a reasonable price. So my next type is going to be um, animal fibers. These would be different types of wool. So I'm going to show you some. We have this yarn, which I showed you earlier. This was a knit crate yarn. This is merino. Merino is your softest wool, other than alpaca, but of, of the sheep family, Merino is going to be your softest, and this is very soft. It is 100% superwash merino. Superwash means it's been treated, it has been treated with chemicals to make it so that it is washer safe. Um, I wouldn't like throw it through the normal cycle. I'd do it on delicate, but you can throw it in the wash if you needed to. So this is the top one. This is merino. Then there is uh, your standard bowls, which this one is Knit Picks Palette. And this is a Highland, this is a Highland wool, which the yarns that I showed you that I dyed for my cozy memory blankets, this was the same yarn. And this is a pattern that I made. It is available on Ravelry. This is called the Keeping You in Stitches Shawl. If you've been with this channel, you've seen this thing a lot. Um, it is 100% Highland wool. It is not rough at all. It is not what I'd consider rustic wool. It actually, I, I find it very soft. It's not as soft as merino, but you could wear it against your skin with absolutely no problem at all. This is a fingering weight. They do, I believe, sell it in a worsted weight, but this is the fingering weight. And it is very reasonably priced. Um, I'll tell you about it in just a few minutes, but this you can get a skein of yarn of this for 2 or $3. dollars. So, and it is 100% wool. So, if you're looking for an economical way to use, like, real wool, you can do that. Uh, then we have alpaca. Alpaca is going to be your very softest wool. This shawl that I'm showing you here is Drakenfels. This is, there it is, the purple in Drakenfels, this dark purple here is alpaca. It is extremely soft. It has a slight halo. I don't know. There you can see a little bit. See the fuzzies on the top? 
when you hear people talk about a halo, that's what they're referring to, is the kind of fuzziness that hangs along the top here. And it's extremely soft. Um, and this was 100% alpaca. I don't know the yarn company I got it. I won it in a giveaway. So um, the other yarns that are in this I got from, I believe I got these from, I can tell you, Craftsy. I got these yarns from Craftsy. Now, you've seen me show hand-dyed yarns before. Hand-dyed yarns can be very expensive. You're looking at, on an average, twenty about $25 a skein for hand-dyed yarn. There is alternatives to that. Craftsy has this. It's called Hawthorne. This is the Hawthorne Speckled. You can see it's gray, and you can see there's speckling colors in there. It looks very much like a hand-dyed and this lighter gray, or the lighter purple that's in here, see if I can pull a piece of it up so you can see it, this section here. This is Hawthorne Tonal, and it looks very much like your hand dyer's tonal yarns. But you can get those skeins of yarn for $10.99. So for $10.99, you can get something that looks looks like a hand dyed yarn it's a hundred percent wool and you know you don't have to spend an arm and a leg for it so that is the types of alpaca the just the dark purple like i said is the alpaca the other is a, is a highland wool then there is um cashmere cashmere is extremely soft it comes from the cashmere goat I did not knit this sweater. This was given to me. It came, somebody gave me some clothes one time, and this was in it, and it is a cashmere sweater. It is, well, I take it back. It's 70% lamb's wool, 20% angora rabbit hair. So it's not cashmere. I thought it was cashmere. Okay, this is angora. I don't have cashmere to show you. This is angora. Extremely soft. I accidentally threw it in the wash. This used to be much bigger. It does fit me better now, but um, it was much bigger. And actually, this started to felt a little bit. You can see it inside here. You can see where it's kind of fuzzy and kind of joined together a little bit. That's because Katrina did not read the ingredients before I tossed it into the laundry. And so not only did it shrink, thankfully it didn't turn out to be the size of a coaster, but it didn't fit a Barbie doll. It didn't shrink that much. But, um, yeah, this is a really warm, soft, cozy sweater that I love. So, um, so Ed is Angora, and I do need to de-pill it. I was talking about pills. Here you can really see them. See the fuzzies sticking up here? All these little balls right under the arms. I need to run a deep pillar on it and shave those off. So that is Angora. Okay, then we have mohair. Now mohair, I'm going to show you. I don't have a ball of it, but I do have a shawl that I made out of mohair. It's not a shawl I'm crazy about, but I'm kind of stuck with it because mohair does not unravel very easily because it has a huge halo on it. So here's the shawl. I like the color, I just am not crazy about the way it looks. Um, but like I said, I'm not unraveling it. And I'll try to show you why. If you look close, and it's kind of hard to show, it's not showing up because they're so fine. But there is quite a halo with mohair. It is very soft. I mean, it's something you definitely would feel really good about wearing it up against your skin. It is really soft. But see, there you can see the fuzz. See the fuzz all along here? It sticks up a good half inch. Because of that, it's very difficult to unravel. So a lot of knitters right now I'm watching are actually combining mohair with a strand of another yarn. So they get a little bit of the fuzzy to it without all of the um, clinginess from it. Because mohair can be a little difficult to knit because it wants to grab onto all the halo, wants to grab itself. So it can it can be a little tough to knit with, and you get a lot of fluffies 
click up at you because you can see there's lots of fluffies and they do come out. So you're going to end up with fuzzies all over you. But it is a very soft wool. So there's that. And then you have your rustic yarn, which is like what I'm making the Barton cardigan. Rustic is just a nice way of saying rough and scratchy. It just sounds nicer when you say rustic. So some places you can get some of this. Well, first let me tell you the pros and cons of wools. The pros are it is flame resistant. Uh, it retains warmth. In fact, they use it for insulation in some houses. You can, if you want natural insulation instead of fiberglass, you can actually have insulation that's made out of wool. Um, it retains warmth. Warmth. It dry. Or it dies easily. Um, acrylics do not die easily uh, because I guess there's already chemicals in there and they just don't react and absorb really well because it's a non-absorbent um, type of yarn. But cottons and wools die very easily. They take the dye at different degrees of darkness or just depending on what the fiber is. Um, they also wick away moisture. So a lot of um, my daughter actually made little pants, like diaper type of pants, to go over to, for one of the babies. It, it slid over top of his regular little diaper, um, you know, cloth diaper. It went over top of that and all acted like the rubber pants that some of us remember that our kids had when they were little, um, because it wicks away moisture. So um, it's also water repellent. It is eco-friendly because the animals and the sheep don't get hurt when you just shear them. You're just giving them a haircut. Um, it can itch. This is the cons. It can itch depending on whether it's rustic or not. Um, it can shrink, as you saw with my Angora sweater, and it can felt, as you also saw with my Angora sweater. Um, so some alternatives for the more expensive yarns are Craftsy Cloudborn, in the w which they sell in a worsted weight, and it's actually dyed by Lorna's Laces. Lorna's Laces is a dye company that's an independent dyer. And it's selling for $14.62, and the fingering weight's selling for $16.88. So there's, a, there's an alternative for hand-dyed yarn. Um, Knit Picks is selling Hawthorne Speckle, which I showed you is that gray that was in my Drakenfels with the little speckles in it, and that's 100 grams for $10.99. And in the solids or tonals, you can get Craftsy Cloudborn uh, Highland Sock, which is what you saw the, um, did I show you that? I don't think I showed you that. Anyway, I have some of that. I have some Cloudborn Highland Sock Fiber, and that's selling for $4.50 for 178 yards. And the worsted weight runs between 6 to $8, and it's 100% wool. Knit Picks has the Wool of the Andes in worsted, and it's $1.99 for a 50-gram ball. Now, just be aware a 50-gram ball is not going to have the yardage that you can buy in your big box stores. Um, it's only 50 grams. So just make sure you watch the yardage when you see some of these. Um, they also have a superwash for $3.69, and they have another yarn called Swish for $4.49, and that's Knit Picks. Knit Picks also has Knit Picks palette. It's three dollars and forty nine cents a skein, uh, which is what I made the the keeping you in stitches shawl out of. This is all Knit Picks palette in the fingering weight, and I used four skeins, and I had quite a bit left over. So, um, yeah, sixteen dollars you got a shawl. So um, that would be your wool options. Now we're going to talk about plant-based. Now plant-based, um, oh and with the wool also, Knit Picks also has alpaca that starts at about six dollars and fifteen cents a skein. So now let's talk about plant-based fibers. Now this is another shawl that I've made. This is another pattern that's available on Ravelry. It's called Banner Unfurled. I've done this in several different colors. One I did in wool. This one I did in cotton. And I made it just because I wanted something patriotic to wear um, for patriotic holidays. I just wore it last week because it was Memorial Day here in the U.S. 
So on the 4th of July, Memorial Day and Labor Day, that's about the only two, three times of the year that I actually wear this. Um, but I have made this in several other different colors. Um, you can make it in any three colors you want. But anyway, this one I'm showing you because it is a cotton bamboo mix. And it is extremely soft. Cotton you can get um, at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Joann's Fabrics. Uh, the most common one that you hear of is um, Lily Sugar and Cream that everybody makes their dishcloths with. But a little warning, because I made a bunch of dishcloths. I have a free dishcloth pattern. Uh, if you check out my pattern page, you'll see what I got. But anyway, I have a free dishcloth pattern. This is not it. This is just your regular solid dishcloth. The one problem with cottons, this is going to hold up because it's not going to get washed all that much. But a dishcloth is constantly in water and gets washed. This was a vibrant, like, aqua color when I got it. I've only used it a few months. That's the one problem with using, you know, your cotton and washing your dishes is it it is going to, it dulls out pretty quick. So just be aware of that if you make cotton and you're going to make something that's going to hold close to your skin like a sweater. Um, you might want something with a little bamboo mixed into it because 100% cotton, if you're washing it a lot, you are going to lose a lot of the color. It's going to look a little dingy after a while. So that's just something to be aware of with cotton. Um, cotton and plant-based fibers, uh, you can have cotton, you can have bamboo, linen, and hemp are just a few to name, uh, but those are all plant-based. The pros of it are they are very breathable. In other words, you're, you know, they're comfortable to wear. They're absorbent, which is why you make dishcloths out of them. I need to weave in the ends. Look at that. Um, they are, they have hypoallergenic properties. They are also eco-friendly. The cons with them are they fade, like I just showed you with the dishcloth, and they can wear fairly fast. They're not as durable as your wools or your acrylics. So, but for summer, you're not going to be wanting to wear wool. This is wool, and I'm okay because the room I'm sitting in is air conditioned right now. Otherwise, this thing would be coming up, coming off really, really quick. So, um, some places that you can get cotton. Of course, like I said, our Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Walmart. You can also, Hobby Lobby carries I Love This Cotton, and it runs roughly around $2.65. They also carry one called Cotton Candy that runs $3.49. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Craftsy has Lion Brand Kitchen Cotton, so that's going to be for making your dishcloths, and it is $3.14 a skein. Knit Picks makes their own version called Dishy, and it's $2.99 a skein. And Lion Brand sells, it's called 277 Cotton, and it's starting at $3.74. So those are some places to check out. Um, I, like I said, I, I am an affiliate for Craftsy and Knit Picks and Lion Brand, and all the links are down below if you want to check out any of those yarns that I've talked about. It'll take you right to those websites. If you do buy through that link, um, I do get a commission out of it. Just want to make you aware of that. Um, not that I'm doing this as an advertisement, even though it kind of sounded that way, but I did just want to let you know where things are available, because not everybody has a yarn store um, or a big box store close to them. And so seeing things online is one thing, seeing them up front um, knitted into projects is another. So that's kind of why I did this. Now let's get on to acquisitions. I got a couple of things this week. First off, I went to my yarn shop for Knit Night, and I was just wandering around because I missed it last week. Or no, I was. I was there last week. But the yarn shop has so much yarn, it's so easy to miss things. My local yarn shop is called The Creative You. So um, she does have a Facebook page if you want to check it out. Anyway, um, she had this adorable shawl hanging in the back. And it's called Galaxy. I was going to print the pattern out, and I didn't get it done. It's called Galaxy. It's, bo it's by Coco Lot de la Coco, Coco la Terre. Okay, which means chocolate by the chocolate ear. Um, but anyway, it is called Galaxy. It's basically a small shawl 
that's plain and then it has like a border of lace at the bottom. It was really pretty. It's a free pattern and it was knit with this yarn. This is a this is a variegated and it's really pretty. It's got this vibrant red which is looking orange here. It's really not. This is kind of like tomato red really. Kind of a tomato red and then it has this kind of a russet color here. Let's see if we can get this closer. Yeah, there we go. Russet and then it goes into, here's kind of a purpley color, and then it goes uh, right in here, you can see it, into these charcoals, into the dark and the light charcoals right here. So, and knitted up here, you can see the charcoals a little bit better. And it, then it goes into the charcoal, almost goes to a black. It's so pretty knit up. I mean, it just, it just reminded me of a campfire, you know, with the red going into the the gradiated charcoal colors it was gorgeous and it was knit in that pattern. So it took two skeins, so I bought I bought two skeins. Yes, look like Princess Leia huh? off of Star Wars. But anyway, I know. I need sleep apparently. So this is what I bought here. And then I bought a new computer. Um, we have Memorial Day sales here in the U.S., and so I went online and I bought a computer, which I'm not currently using because I haven't finished getting it set up. It was just, I'm still putting everything onto it, but the computer I use, um, I don't film using my computer. I use it for the monitor to watch the camera, so, but anyway, um, my, cam my computer, I'm not sure how old it is. I got it used, and I've had it four or five years and I don't know how old it was before that, but it's very slow and it's progressing and it's getting slower. Sort of like me. Yeah, we're all getting slower. But anyway, my computer was starting to die and the, it was freezing up on the screens and stuff. I was having some problems with it. So before I lost everything that was on it and had the computer completely crash. Oh, and it kept getting so hot that I was afraid it was going to catch fire. That's probably not a good thing. Um, the fan came on on the computer one night, and my husband looked over and went, what is that noise? I said, it's my computer fan. He's like, it is time to get you a new computer. It was to the point where I was afraid to leave leave it on if I left the house because I was afraid that it would catch fire. So definitely time for a new computer. So I got a new computer. Um, not an expensive one. I think I paid 147 for it, which is really dirt cheap for a, a, a computer, a laptop. So, um, yeah, that was my two purchases this week. So now let's get on to what you all have been waiting for, the yarn giveaway. Reminder of what it is. It is Woolen Vine Yarns, and here's what it looks like. I had the giveaway ran for four weeks. We had 912 entries, and I wrote every single person's name down. I mean, front and back, two columns, four and a half pages. Yeah, four and a half pages front and back. We had 912 entries into this. So I used random.org random to choose a winner, and the winner was number 515, who is drum roll. I don't know how to put the sound effects in there. So anyway, the winner is Tina Brenning. So Tina, if you would get in contact with me at Katrina's Creations at yahoo.com and give me your address, I will get this mailed out to you as soon as I hear from you. So thank you everybody for participating in the giveaway and stick around. We might have some more coming down the road. Um, we have hit a thousand subscribers, so at this point I am just waiting for YouTube to approve the channel so that um, I get like sponsored ads coming through. So once the channel becomes self-supporting a little bit, we can do more giveaways. Uh, so that's exciting. So thank you for everybody who entered and all the comments that went back and forth. I've enjoyed getting to know some of you a little bit better. So next week we have something special. One of our used, one of our viewers actually requested that I do a tutorial on how to knit a cardigan without a pattern, which I do have another video up. I've done a tutorial on it before and I have a pattern for it for knitting a uh, sweater without a pattern. 
And um, I did do an episode where I do that tutorial. I'll stick it in a link up here. Um, but anyway, I had not done a cardigan. So I'm going to do that next week. And you can apply it to knitting or crochet. It's not something where you actually, you design the pattern itself. It's basically teaching you the formula of how to put it together and how to, what to add. It's, it's, if you're into math, you'll enjoy it. So anyway, um, that will be next week. We will have this tutorial. So thank you again, everybody, for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And I will see you next Saturday. Thank you for making my week brighter with chatting with all of you guys. And I hope you have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next Saturday. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody.